Hey everyone, welcome to Live Free and Tool On. Today we're talking about 18 gauge brad nailers and crown staplers. And we're going to talk about what you want to use the crown stapler for and what you want to use for the 18 gauge. So stick around everybody, this is the one for you. Let's talk about the main differences between these two tools. One shoots staples, one shoots nails. This is a staple right here, you can see, and that's a nail. The staples are the more firm holding because it actually shoots two vertical pieces of uh, steel, whereas the nails, they only shoot one, but the nails have a head on them. Now what I always use the 18 gauge brad nailer for is for fine woodworking, um, something with stronger woods, and I want to hide the nails and I, I don't want them to be that much visible. So they have a little bitty nail head on the um, head of them. You can sink them down into the wood and they're not as noticeable, but they do hold the wood in very well. Something that I would use the crown stapler on is something of like a really uh, fine foam, something that you would get for crown molding, things like that. And it's made out of foam instead of wood. But if you use a brad nailer, that's just going to blow straight through it because it doesn't have the surface area. It doesn't have the catch of a stapler itself. Now, you can use staples on wood, you can use it on thicker wood. This goes up to an inch and a half, um, and this goes up to a two inch capacity. Um, you know, something that I also use this for is really thin trim, even if it's wood, around door frame. I would say if it's a quarter inch or thinner than a quarter of an inch, I always go for the crown stapler. Um, not so much the brad nailer because it will just blow it through. And I think the best way to show you that is to, let's go ahead and demonstrate it. Okay, so we have a quarter inch piece of trim right here. This is a four by four uh, piece of pressure treated wood and it's, they're both pine. What I'm gonna do is first, we're gonna shoot the brad nailer in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop it in. Okay, so that sunk it in and it did a pretty good job. You can't really see it, you can see there. So it's pretty well hidden. Here's the problem that you have. It pulls straight out, look at that. There's no issue pulling that straight out. So this, anyone bumps this, it's going to come straight out. That's, for something like this, that's when you really want to use the crown stapler. You see that? It's not pulling out. It's not going anywhere. Now you can pull it, but it's taking big chunks out. So you're using the more of the integrity of the wood to hold everything together. So it is stronger. Now the big difference is, is this right here. So let's put them in. Okay, so what can you see right there? You can see that is much more visible than that hole. Now, to get, away, to get around that, you can go ahead, you can put some wood putty on there, you can sand it down. But what if you didn't, what if you didn't want to do that and you just wanted to leave it? You know, if you have really good cuts um, and you, you don't want to have the discoloration, especially when you stain it, um, you could just leave it uh, that way and this is going to look aesthetically better. But this structurally is more sound. Now, this has to be a lot stronger because it has to push two nail, essentially two nails, a, sta a staple is two nails all the way in, and it needs to countersink it just a little bit there. So um, they both have a time and a place for both. So let's go ahead and move on to some material that I would use a brad nail for that I necessarily would not use the crown stapler for. Okay, so this is half inch uh, piece of plywood, and it's nice. You can sand this down, you can do a lot with it, but I will use this in a lot of cases. And that's how far that I would put these nails apart, but you can see I can actually pick that up. Now if I want to jerk it, yeah, it can come through because these are just small heads, but let's just see if I just put one in here. It's still able to pick it up, right? Of course I can pull it off, but the integrity of this wood, being that it's half inch, is a lot better than something that's a quarter of an inch. Um, and this is more coarse, so it's gonna, it has a lot more fill inside of it. Whereas the solid wood, or if it's foam, it really doesn't. So, 
you know, that's where I would start to the delineation is when I start to get thinner wood from here. So that was just a simple demonstration to show you the big differences, or at least the differences that I see and how I use these particular tools. And, you know, I use them all the time. They have a lot of features on the tools and they're a lot of, and they're similar too. So on the base inside of here, they have a multiple. You can do uh, one nail, you can do multiple. And what that means is that you can set it, um, hit one nail, slide it over, hit another one, instead of picking the whole thing up. On the side, this is the depth of how far the nail is actually going to go in, or the staple. Um, so depending on how far this is going in, if it's not going in far enough, you can adjust the back of it. There's a lot of good adjustments on this. They have a lot of great reviews. Ryobi's doing a great job with these, but these aren't the only ones out there. I would encourage you if you're in the market and you're not invested in platform, do a lot of research. I think for the homeowner um, and you know the hobbyist, I think Ryobi's a great way to go. You're not really going to go wrong with it, and it doesn't break the bank, so you're going to be able to pick up these tools a lot less than you would a DeWalt or a Milwaukee. Um, you know, or some of those higher brands out there like Makia, Makita. So I really hope that this helped you out with this small, short demonstration if you're in the market for these. If it did, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the like button, and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.